sisters, brethren, and friends all, I hope you all had an enjoyable weekend. As we remembered at home and online, the Allies' victory in Europe 75 years ago. Some of us have personal recollections. For myself, my father served in the RAF in the Far East, was listed as missing, presumed dead, but thankfully survived after spending several weeks in the jungle of Burma. Others may remember being evacuated as children, while for the younger generations the war will be history. However, it's a history that needs to be remembered because of the freedoms defended and won. Today we conclude our commemorations and celebrations with a service of thanksgiving and remembrance. Give thanks for all who fought and served, both at home and overseas, and remembering the sacrifice of those who suffered and died. Today we are in another world war, the war against coronavirus. I trust with God's help we will one day soon be able to hold a service of thanksgiving for victory over coronavirus. Thanks to the vaccine has been found and the virus defeated. It will also be a day to honour those who served on the front line, our National Health Service, those who kept our country functioning, the essential workers and those who volunteered on the home front to support those self-isolating and staying at home. Until that day comes, may we continue to pray daily for all who serve and give thanks to Almighty God for the hope he offers in this time of crisis and change. The Orange Institution played its part with those from all faiths and none in securing victory in Europe 75 years ago. Today we again work alongside all who seek to prioritise the health of our nations. This Grand Lodge service of thanksgiving and remembrance will be led by three of our Grand Chaplains. And may we all prosper spiritually from this time of worship spent together. Let us begin our Victory in Europe Thanksgiving service by reminding ourselves of who God is and of the help that he gave to our forefathers, particularly during the Second World War. Psalm 22, verses 3 to 5, tell us this. You are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not disappointed. Therefore, in the words of Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Our opening praise is a contemporary version of Psalm 46. God is our strength and refuge, our present help in trouble. The tune that it's being sung to was made famous by the film Dam Busters. And after this praise, we will be led in a prayer of thanksgiving by Brother the Reverend Ron Johnston.
Let us all join together in prayer. Let us all pray. Father God, in the midst of our national Thanksgiving events, as we gather in our separate homes, we take time to worship you, the great God of nations. We acknowledge our sins, but rejoice that we can come before you, our Heavenly Father, in the name of your beloved Son, our Redeemer. We thank you for the Saviour, the Captain of the Lord's hosts, who came to this earth and voluntarily gave himself as a sacrifice, so that all who trust in him would have eternal freedom from the penalty and bondage of sin. We praise you that through his blood, toil, tears and sweat, he won the victory at Calvary. On this notable occasion, the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, we praise you for your providential dealings with our nation. We yield you our adoration and thanksgiving for your gracious gift of victory from the domination of Nazism under Hitler. We confess that it is of thy goodness that our civil and religious liberty, which we hold dear, was preserved. You were a strong tower of defense unto our nation against the face of our enemies. When our nation was in its darkest hour facing the might of Nazism, we thank you for raising up leaders and enduing them with wisdom and courage. We thank you for the great example of His Majesty King George VI and members of the Royal Household, the Prime Minister Winston Churchill and his dogged determination, and for other political leaders and military commanders. As we bow before you, we feel deep gratitude for the many men and women who paid the supreme sacrifice in the Second World War for our freedom. We realize that freedom is not free at cost to obtain and maintain. We're conscious that if liberty is not defended, it's lost. We do thank you for the spirit of determination within the population, enabling them to serve in the war effort, whether in the battlefield or on the home front. We're thankful for the contribution made by members of our Orange Order in the war effort. Above all, we praise you with the psalmist that you give us not up as a prey to our enemies. We acknowledge that the Lord had not been on our side when men rose up against us. Then they had swallowed us up quickly. Lord, would you remember after Israel was delivered from bondage in Egypt under Pharaoh, Moses, the commander of Israel, led the people in a great song of thanksgiving for victory, of how Israel was commanded by you to set aside each year anniversaries to remember their God-given deliverance. Our Father, we remember with gratitude that on the day of victory in Europe, that the commander-in-chief of our British forces in Europe, Field Marshal Montgomery, in a message to the troops, wrote of their feeling of great joy and thankfulness. But we're so glad that he added in his communique, we must remember to give the praise and thankfulness where it is due. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Our Father, we would in this anniversary re-echo Montgomery's words in praise to you. The victory you gave our nation is marvelous in our eyes. We pray thy blessing upon Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the members of the royal household we pray especially at this time of crisis from the COVID-19 virus that those in leadership in our nation would follow the example of our forefathers during the Second World War and seek your blessing. May they be given wisdom to rule in righteousness. In your grace, cause this Thanksgiving service and act of remembrance to be a blessing to each one of us. May your name be glorified, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. May the 8th, 1945, Victory in Europe Day will always be one of the great milestones in British, European and world history. But of course, victory came at a cost. It is therefore right and fitting that we in the Orange Institution should have an act of remembrance to mark the 75th anniversary of VE Day. Following our act of remembrance, a wreath will be laid on behalf of the Grand Master. The love that never falters, the love that pays the price, the love that marks undaunted the final sacrifice. In the presence of the eternal and living God, let us call to remembrance those who for the sake of peace made war, 
those who forsook all at the call to serve, the soldiers, sailors, and airmen, particularly of the Second World War, who went forth and returned no more, the ministers of help and healing, the chaplains, doctors, and nurses who saved others, but not themselves, all those from Northern Ireland who laid down their lives, all those brethren and sisters from within the Orange family who made the supreme sacrifice, those whose names are written deep in our own hearts, who died in the faith of Christ and who are now more than conquerors before the throne of God. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Now, brother, the Reverend John Noble will read to us from God's Word and bring us the message for today. Our reading today is uh, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. We read from Romans chapter 13 and from verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. 
Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. They are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due. Taxes, to whom taxes are due. Customs, to whom customs. Fear, to whom fear. Honour, to whom honour. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Amen. We thank God uh, for his word. On Tuesday, the 8th of May, 1945, a victory in Europe Day, uh, King George VI made a broadcast uh, to the nation. I want to share just three short quotations from his speech that day. Today, we give thanks to Almighty God for a great deliverance. Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war, has been finally overcome. In the hour of danger, we humbly committed our cause into the hand of God, and he has been our strength and shield. Victory, of course, was finally achieved after an important campaign that began in the early months of 1945. The Allied forces had crossed the Rhine and indeed uh, had moved across the Low Countries, across the Rhine, and Germany now lay before them. Victory was in their grasp. A number of crucial defeats had weakened the enemy, and the defeat of Germany was inevitable. According to the king, this was a victory through dangers which at times seemed overwhelming. Victory was brought about through God's deliverance. The hand and protection of God was upon our nation. And so in this time of thanksgiving for that victory, as a nation, we come to a weekend of remembrance 75 years on from those days. However, of course, this is 2020 and the coronavirus pandemic has been described as the biggest global threat since World War II. An unseen killer that has affected over three million people and brought almost a quarter of a million deaths across the world. A danger which has overwhelmed so many countries in its spread. And the need for us again as a nation is to commit ourselves unto God, to realize that he and he alone 
is our strength and our shield. God's word teaches us that right back uh, to the Garden of Eden, there has been a war against evil being raged right throughout history. The struggles have been faced. And of course, today, still today, the battle against good and evil is being fought on many, many different fronts. The greatest and most significant, and indeed the most dangerous of such battles, is the one that rages daily with sin and the devil. The struggle against sin is a continuous uh, a campaign. It is one that threatens the existence of each and every person, like the coronavirus. It is a global threat, as well as being a national and a personal threat all at one and the same time. It threatens our very being. It is a threat which has existed since the beginning of time itself when Adam and Eve sinned. But the wonderful news of the gospel is this. Victory has been won. Last month we celebrated Easter, a very different type of way that we we were forced to mark Easter this year. But Easter, of course, is the remarkable story of Christ Jesus dying upon a cross. It's an account of betrayal, of denial, and of death. And the pain and the anguish and the suffering and the loss which we find contained in the gospel account of the crucifixion are also experiences which physically and emotionally are found in war situations. And indeed, even in the, the pandemic with which we are now surrounded. This death of Jesus on Calvary is a death like no other. This was God's son dying for sinners. This, his death and his resurrection meant that Satan had been defeated. And so Paul writes in this passage you read together in Romans chapter 13 and in verse 12, he writes about the value of, of Christ and the value of salvation in the life of a person. And he stresses the urgency of a response to that. This night is far spent, he says. The day is at hand. God has delivered his salvation. Sin has been overcome. And today, and indeed every day, we can celebrate the victory of Jesus for us. Yet, just like our forefathers 75 years ago, daily we have to battle against the rearguard action of a defeated enemy. But Christ is our assurance that the war has been won. The Savior is the guarantee of our victory. And Jesus is the one who helps us all in faith to overcome the darkness of our fallen humanity. We are instructed in verse 12 of the passage to cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. A wonderful reminder that we ought to surround ourselves in Jesus as our protector. In the following verse, we are urged to put on the Lord Jesus Christ so that by the grace of God and with Jesus, we are able to fight whatever lies ahead of us, to know him as Lord and Savior and to trust him for the future. Just as 75 years ago, the war in Europe was won. So today, victory over sin has been won. Yes, there are battles still to be fought until Jesus comes again. But the victory is assured. And just like our forefathers a celebrated blessing of victory in 1945, so we ought to have a great confidence to declare today a confidence through a personal and saving faith that we are found in him 
one who loves us and who has given himself for us, that we might rejoice as it is declared to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory in Europe was an important moment in the history of our nation. But in Christ, we are reminded in the word that victory in him is eternal. And to God, indeed, we give the thanks. And to God, we give the glory today and forevermore. Let's bow for a moment in prayer. Father, we do indeed thank you for your word. Today, we thank you for the blessing of the word that speaks to us and challenges us and encourages us. On a day, Lord, whenever we give thanks for victory uh, over an enemy so long ago, we thank you for the victory that Jesus has won for us on the cross. And we pray that in days of remembrance and thanksgiving, that we might indeed turn to the Lord in faith and in trust, knowing that whatever comes today, tomorrow, or in the days to come, knowing that in him, we have indeed the victory. Victory in Jesus. We thank you for Christ today. In his name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is that well-known hymn, Abide With Me. It's a hymn, of course, that, that resonates um, even today in today's highly a secularized society. Each verse ends with the title plea, Abide With Me. A sustained call to God who we ask to remain with us. A call for God's personal presence in every stage and condition of life. A hymn for any person who feels a need of God. The hymn, Abide With Me.
Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for your many glorious deliverances in times past, for your many mercies in times present, for your mighty promises for the times to come. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The National Anthem. <laughs>